Okay, after I uh, toe switch off, or toe switch on, sorry, disconnect the battery, remove the two to Torx heads, pull the cover off, pull it to the side. Okay, hopefully the wind's not too bad. I have my toe run switch off and I have my battery disconnected. Uh, first step is remove the solenoid. Leave wires attached. This ended up being a 10 millimeter. This needs a 10 millimeter nut. Okay, we're going to now remove the resistor cage, the 10 millimeter socket, and the wobble joint. Okay, I quit filming because that was probably one of the harder things to film. Uh, the three bolts to take the resistor cage off, uh, you just kind of have to work down in there. Uh, there's one there, one there, one there. And you got to work in between the resistor and the little resistor cage. Uh, but once you get those out, you should be able to disconnect this. Disconnect the... Okay, go ahead and unclip the harness. Get the factory harness moved over. Okay. And the next step says we can remove the res the uh, motor wires, which it looks like they're color coded. So go ahead and get to that. Okay, this appears to be a 10 millimeter also motor cables okay now that the motor cables are loose we're gonna go ahead and remove our to our solenoid here 10 millimeter also And I've already, I've upgraded to two gauge cables, so I actually have long enough cables. I don't think I'm going to have to use the one from the kit. I got one more wire. It is the, it's to the negative. Negative terminal on the battery pack. Okay. And those were all 10 millimeter bolts okay okay so that's my negative cable got my motor wires okay i don't know if you can see that yeah okay everything's unhooked from there okay it appears to remove the actual controller i need a 15 millimeter wrench or a socket there's not much room for a socket i do have do have these ratcheting wrenches, but even then, fifteen millimeter. So this one, It is hard to see too, but you have a little more room. The only 
anything left hooked up to the controller is this resistor module cable. So let's see if I can get that unplugged and hopefully this. Maybe one more. Let me see if I can find that. Hold on just a second. All right, guys, we're back, and I don't think I'm going to be able to show this, but there is one that appears to be 15 millimeter. Uh, last deal on the very uh, back of it, and kind of the motor wires are kind of in the way you're going to try to move the motor wire. And it would be a good place for a socket. pause this because you aren't going to be able to see this anyway. Alright, once I get this last 15 millimeter bolt loose, it appears that the controller is going to come out. Alright, let me get this last one loose. Okay, and then... Got a resistor wire still hooked up. You can see that. <clears throat> got a couple of resistor wires still hooked up. We'll get those unhooked and get the controller completely out. I'm going to tell you what I've done so far. Uh, what I did to make it a little easier, I mounted the resistor cage before I put the mount in. It made it much easier. It was able to go in while it was attached. The instructions don't show to do that, but I went ahead and mounted it first. You know, I have it mounted to the cart. It's a 7 16 nut on the bottom uh, with a little stand. The instructions are pretty clear on what you're doing here. But So I'm fixing to reset the camera up, and I'll install the controller. All right, we're going to go a little different than the instructions say. Because with this RXV Dana hair mounting plate, I really don't have room to slide it under the screws it says to leave them loose and then slide it under but I was having a lot of trouble with that so I'm just gonna try yeah that's gonna work okay it's a tight squeeze but there is room to do this without, without sliding the controller uh, underneath and it does it might work better on the Curtis version but on this one it just seems like this is gonna be the easiest okay so once I get those started again this is a 7 16 head and so we'll secure all four in place with a lock washer and a flat washer And that's installed. I've got the box installed. Reposition. Okay, now we're going to hook up our motor cables.
Okay, now that we got our motor cables hooked up, we're gonna hook up our battery negative. I think I mentioned this earlier in the video. I do have two gauge cables, and so I'm using the cable I already have rather than the one that came. There's a longer four gauge cable that comes with the golf cart for this connection. But I'm gonna be using my two gauge rather than the one that came with it. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up the resistor cable to the resistor. This is the lengthened resistor cable that came with the kit. Okay, last cable that will actually hook to the controller is going to be the battery positive from the solenoid. And again, that's also an upgraded cable from my end. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put the solenoid back in partially in place I can tighten this cable up okay so I'll go ahead and put the solenoid back in place with the previous use the hardware from the earlier the OEM hardware this stuff I already removed All right, so the solenoid's back installed. I've got the resistor, batteries, everything hooked up except for the actual harness. So I'll go grab that and see what we can do. Not sure if it matters which order, but it does so show to hook the harness to the controller first. So we will listen for the click. That is have that one in, and then it says you can hook your factory harness into the uh, into the adapter harness, which you can see little notches. I don't know if we can see this in the deal. There's notches on this. A notch here and a notch here and they correspond to this there's a tab here and tab here so it can only go one way and it's also got the clicker on that side so and it clicked okay so now the only thing to do would be to run the OTF which I'm not gonna run it right now because I'm not exactly sure I'm gonna mount it the only other thing left to do is to tie up your wires, hook your batteries back up, and give it a test run. So, uh, next thing you'll see will be the test run. I'm going to compare the uh, the stock versus the Navitas. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, just let me know.